The time has come, it's finally here. <laughs> we're gonna take the 3090 RTX and we're gonna release it from its air cooler bonds and we're going to swap it over to an EK Quantum Vector water block. This is for our water cooled build and we've already got the motherboard water block installed in our last video and so now all that's left is to get the 3090 water block installed once that's done we can start working on the plumbing so today we're going to be taking this air cooler off and going through what it's going to take to install the quantum vector from ek uh, things to kind of pay attention to if you're taking it apart uh, how to do it and uh, how to make sure that you do it correctly you know the 3090 air cooler is actually really cool it's really beefy and it's really heavy um, it performs extremely well when we were kind of stress testing it to make sure that uh, everything was working correctly with the card before installing the water cooler. You know, as good as this air cooler is, I'm really looking forward to seeing how well the water cooler performs once we have that installed. So let's get started. All right, so let's open up this box and just take a look at what the EK Quantum Vector water block comes with. I know the monoblog did not come with any instructions. We had to download those online. And I'm assuming we're probably gonna have to do the same thing with this cooler. But we will find out as soon as we get cracked into this box. This water block feels pretty heavy. So it probably is uh, gonna still need to use a GPU bracket just so that we keep it from sagging. Uh, luckily, the O11D came with a GPU bracket that we can use for that. All right. So again, it comes with uh, some tools and screws, bolts, that kind of thing, as well as some thermal paste. Lots of thermal pads because we're going to need to place those on the GPU. And it also comes with obviously the water block itself. And man, that is a cool looking water block. I think, um, I think that is definitely gonna do a really great job cooling that card. It looks like the bottom is kind of really machined. The blocks look a little bit machined. They don't look actually really all that flat. They, uh, they look like they're maybe a little bit rougher than they, than they could be, but we'll, uh, we'll look at the flatness and obviously we'll know how well it cools once we get it installed on the board and we can get the plumbing done and get it all tested. All right, so that is uh, a lot of shiny nickel plating uh, over top of copper there. And those water channels where you can see the finning right over top of the GPU and then the cooling for all the other components. So that's the first piece that we're gonna be using there. And of course that is RGB enabled. So we've got an RGB plug that we're going to be uh, using a converter cable to plug into the Corsair Commander Pro. And then we've got our EK Quantum Vector backplate. So let's get that opened up and take a peek. So the Quantum Vector backplate comes with some screws as well as the backplate itself. And again, this backplate is going to match the Vector Strix uh, water block. There's a few other little bits there. Look at all those thermal pads. We're gonna need those thermal pads because there are some components uh, such as memory on the back plate that are going to get very, very hot. And we're gonna need to put that in there to uh, prevent the RAM from overheating and the other components. And so that back plate will end up going on top of the graphics card while the water block will go on the bottom because we're actually doing a uh, horizontal mount. And yeah, that looks really, really nice. It is still got some machining marks on it and stuff that you know you probably don't want to see. But again, because we're going to be using thermal pads on most of these components, that's actually going to be fine. Uh, and then there's the mirror finish on the back. And it's kind of got a little bit of a swirl to it just for some texture and effect. That is going to look really, really good in our system. And uh, yeah, so we're going to have to take that apart. Now there are no instructions on the box. So no instructions in the box. So you're going to have to go online to download the instructions from EK, which is what we will do. And then we'll kind of walk through the uh, 
steps that are required to get the backplate as well as the water block installed onto the GPU. All right, so we'll begin by removing the backplate first. And so with all the screws removed from the backplate, we should be able to take off the GeForce RTX logo and we should be able to remove the backplate. Now it is going to have some thermal uh, adhesive and thermal pads underneath it, so it may be a little bit difficult to remove. You just have to be patient with it. So just very carefully and slowly going to pry the backplate off. And there we have it. There's the backplate and you can see the thermal pads on there as well. There are a lot of really thick thermal pads on this side that uh, I can see the thermal pads that come with the EK water block are not going to be thick enough to cover those so we may have to look at getting a thick, thicker thermal pad for that as well. So you also want to remove the uh, RGB lighting as well. Make sure that everything's unplugged uh, before you try taking the heat sink off as well. Alright so the next thing we're going to have to remove is the screws that are actually holding the mount and the heat sink on place. That's it. So now the heat sink and the board are separated and we can start putting the water block on. Okay, so once we've re removed the back plate and the heat sink, then we have to remove all of the old thermal pads. So there'll be thermal pads kind of all over the, uh, the memory, all over the, uh, the, the power delivery, and they will be, uh, you know, kind of chunky. So you've got to kind of get them off of there. Um, you do want to make sure that the surfaces are smooth and clean from the old thermal pads so that the new thermal pads can uh, transfer heat effectively. And then you want to clean and make sure that the actual graphics processing unit is clean of any old thermal compound because we'll be replacing that thermal compound for putting on the new uh, water block. So the EK kit does come with a number of different uh, thermal pads and these are all fairly thin. So um, they're actually, I'm actually a little bit concerned because the thermal pads, uh, some of the thermal pads on the original heatsink are quite thick and I don't know that these are gonna be enough. So um, as I'm installing it, I'm actually gonna check for height to make sure that these are thick enough. Uh, if they're not, then I'll get some additional thermal pads to put in there. Uh, if they are thick enough based on the design of the water block, then we should get proper pressure between the water block and the thermal pads and the power delivery, RAM and GPU. Now these thermal pads will have to be cut down to size to uh, cover the different components that we'll be covering today. And so we're gonna go ahead and get these cut off screen and we'll come back and uh, show you where they're installed. And uh, there, there should be enough in the package here to uh, cover all of the components that need to be covered, but uh, we'll come right back and we'll show you with them installed where those are being applied.
So this is the recommended thermal pad layout for EK water blocks. And as I mentioned before, they're using the one millimeter thick thermal pads. Now, when I place the uh, water block over top and check it for fitment, it seems like a couple of the uh, pads are actually too thin. So I'm gonna put it together and test it anyway, just to be uh, certain of that. And we'll see how it goes. So this is all of the thermal pads that we need to apply. And next we just need to apply some thermal compound to the GPU itself. And we're gonna be using our Arctic MX4 for that. Uh, it just, again, swear by the MX4, I love it. I use it for everything. And uh, so we'll get that applied and then we'll test fit the water block and we'll see how it goes. We'll get the back plate then set up. Of course, the back plate's also gonna need thermal pads as well. So we'll get this portion done. We'll get the water block installed and we'll flip it over and we'll start working on the back plate as well. All right, so we've got the water block screwed in and we've left a couple screws out because we're gonna be installing the back plate. So the back plate is gonna need to leave those screw holes open and so that that can be screwed in as well. So now we'll clean up the old thermal interface material, get that removed from the back as much as we can here. We'll apply the new thermal pads and then we can secure the back plate on and then we're uh, pretty much wrapped up. So I'll go ahead and get the thermal pads cut and applied for this particular back plate. Uh, and I'll kind of just fast forward through the video so that you can see how and where the thermal pads are being placed for the backside of the GPU. All right, so just a quick recap. Uh, I've applied all the uh, thermal pads. Also a note, don't forget to take off the plastic. Uh, I didn't show that in on the first side, uh, but you do need to take those off before you apply the um, water block to the GPU. So what we have here is we have one millimeter thickness pads a two millimeter thickness pad, uh, one and a half millimeter thickness pads here, 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 and here. And then uh, I've actually reused the thermal interface material from the uh, factory backplate because it is ultra thin and uh, there were, and there was thermal interface material between the uh, these components and the backplate. So I wanted to include some thermal interface material there since it was already there on the stock coolers. Uh, and so now everything here is set up and essentially ready to peel off the plastics and we can go ahead and put on the back plate. So we'll go ahead and do that now. We'll get the back plate secured uh, and then that's it. We're, we're gonna be done. We can get it mounted into the computer case and we can start working on the loop. There we have it, the uh, monoblocks installed, the backplates installed, and now we've got a uh, RTX 3090 with an EK water block and backplate all set up. Uh, the clearance on the RAM seems okay on the water block side, 
I'm not really sure about the backplate side though because I can't really see in there too well. Uh, it does look like there is sufficient pressure in most places. So um, we're gonna hook it up, test it, check all the temperatures and just make sure that uh, everything is uh, dissipating heat the way it should be. So the next step is for me to get this mounted into the case and I've kind of got a rough plan for my water loop uh, but we're gonna just make sure that that plan is still gonna work once everything's installed. So I'll go ahead and get this installed in the case and then I'll start working on the next video which will be uh, building the loop itself and getting everything plumbed in so that we can power it up and give it a try.